this episode of OpenSKED by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I want to share this um, uh, bench anvil or bench block that I designed up from some blueprints I got off the that Lazy Machinist uh, website. So one of the things I want to talk about here is not only the object I designed, but some of the concepts I'm going to be working towards on this channel as well as my DIY3DTech.com channel. So one of the big pieces, I want to start making the relationship between 3D printing and actually CNC machining in the, in the process that we see in commercial machining because I think this is a big opportunity for individuals looking to move into the manufacturing industry and I think we're seeing a lot of resurgence in the marketplace I don't think there's enough people uh, to enter the market with the new generation of manufacturing technologies and I think 3d printing is a good way to make that to, to bridge that gap if you will because I think one of the things that's overlooked with 3d printing is hey you can go out to Thingiverse or you know do these um, you know simple things Things with 3d printing and print a koozie or whatever but there is really value in learning 3d printing uh, learning modeling because one of the things in the industry that we're seeing is that uh, part design to production is becoming much closer and as different additive techniques increase as well as on the CNC side multiple axi machines are becoming more affordable um, you're going to see a revolution I think in the whole manufacturing industry and this is a good place to start so with that one of the big places that we start is actually right here with the blueprint now as mentioned I got this off that Lazy Machinist uh, website and I have a link down below where you can download these in his website. Uh, he does a lot of great work with basic what I would call classical machining non CNC you know where the rubber sort of meets the road where you got to turn the cranks as a human being and you have to know all the math and th this is really great because when we start out things um, in the commercial world this is how it basically starts it starts with a 2d representation of a thought and this is actually pretty good uh, a lot of times you know I've seen back of napkins you know doodle pads all kinds of other um, you know simplistic forms of trying to communicate a design idea so one of the things that's really important to kind of be able to take you know the thoughts of somebody else and extrapolate them into a physical product this is one of the big commercial powers in, in using 3d printing will allow you to hone those skills because many times you'll have to go from this drawing to a CAD representation to a cam production to a finished part and I'll cover more of this on my DIY3DTech.com channel. In this channel, I want to focus more on the code or extrapolation, how I took this drawing and converted it into a um, uh, OpenSCAD um, program to create this object. Now, kind of going back into OpenSCAD, if you will, uh, you can see the object here. Now, the end object, one of the things you'll notice, I've put some knurling on the outside. I don't show that here because the knurling module takes a ton of computer power so trying to record this video and render it is just basically impossible because one of the unfortunate things about sing, uh, uh, of open SCAD is it's single threaded on the processor so uh, you know even though I have six cores of processor on this and some really powerful compute power in this machine I simply can't bring it to bear in open SCAD and it just kind of drags the whole thing down but with that said I want to talk about a couple different pieces how I went about converting this because one of the things that if we go back to the blueprint drawing uh, notice this over here this table of holes which translates over here so you have the labels and then you notice them over here and A is the center now notice that these are the only ones with positional uh, indications on them so they're at the origin 0 0 and the origin is at the center of this block here However, you have all these remaining B through J, which are set around this diameter. And he's sharing that this diameter, in this case, he has it indicated down here in the drawing. It's imperial. And, and this is some of the pieces that you need to look for in this drawing. You know, what units are it in? What are its tolerances? You know, he's got the tolerances down here. Now, I wouldn't worry too much about that in this case. Um, 
you know, because we're, we're 3D printing it. But if you're machining it, these are very important things to understand. Uh, so in this episode, I want to talk about a little bit about how I did this, because I thought this was a little bit unique, eh, maybe not that unique. But for, you know, those starting out from novice to intermediate, this this is a good tutorial. If you guys are experts, well, you're experts. But with that, what I did is I defined these in my parameters. So I defined my holes. Uh, a through J and then what I did is I went down here and I set up um, I set up a circle pattern uh, using a for loop now this was a little bit hard to do uh, because what I did is I loaded these into uh, an array so here I have values and I have the array set up and, and I've loaded them in here. Now, what I need to do is enumerate through them, but we know one of the big limitations of OpenSCAD is you cannot uh, repeatedly reinstantiate a variable. In other words, you cannot say A equals A plus 1. So how did I get around that? Right here is how I got around it. I, I knew that basically um, it was going to work on the basis of uh, 45 so what I did is I took my values here so I read the length of the values divided by 360 which is going to give me a value of I so this is how many in iterations that I am going to take and now what I do is I come down here as you can see I've done the echo is by by uh, instantiating out a known value now this is a little bit I must admit this is a little bit of a hack so you can kind of see how I'm doing it here so to, to come up with the even value to instantiate the call to the array I'm having to divide I by 45 to come up with a number uh, having thought about this there are certain ways I think I could have come about this mathematically um, but you know in doing this when I first started out because I tried out several different tricks to instantiate the number I couldn't do it um, so I just cheated a little bit and, and said well I know if I divide it out if I divide I by 45 then what I'm going to do is continually get the numbers that I'm looking for and that that's basically what I did is got the numbers that I was looking for uh, to call it out because obviously you're going to have one have values one values two values three so dividing by 45 gives me that number in those brackets to come up with that um, output and then what I do is I simply spin it around um, you know that you know uh, circumference area that we have here and again I put the center circle in the middle or the A so this was a neat way to go about it I may do a video in the future of coming up with a little bit more programmatic way to come up with the 45 rather than doing math on a calculator outside of the program because I think it would be possible but in the comments below let me know how you would go about this um, coming up with this and what your ideas are because I think what we could do is we could simply take the number because we know the length and again we could come back and create another variable up here to come up with the 45 but I haven't thought that through deeply uh, so let me know in the comments below how you would solve this problem is there a better programmatic way to solve this problem than I did so anyways I, I don't want to belabor that point too much I think you got the idea there most everything else is is pretty straightforward outside of using the the arrays I've been getting into using arrays a little bit more in, in some of my programmatic functions uh, where I want to have something that I would call a little bit polymorphic if you will so tell you what um, Let's hop over the bench. Let's take a look at the end product and see what it looks like all printed out. So let's see you at the Brent bench. Welcome back. So we talked at the computer about the design. We looked at the blueprint of this, and here we go. We have the finished piece. Now I printed this out of PETG, or for those youngsters out there, PETG. Uh, and it came out pretty good. So one of the things I did do, since this is going to be pounded on, is I did anneal it with a heat gun to really toughen up the, the top surface here. And uh, it came out pretty good. So you can kind of see it in reference to the, uh, the blueprint over here. And again, we've got the base down here, as we see. 
And so all in all, this came out pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with this. So uh, you'll find this out on Thingiverse. And, you know, if you just want the STLs uh, or STL, uh, but I'll also have the OpenSCAD code for this if you want to do your own version out on the OpenSCAD site. The link will be down below. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. And we'll see you guys in the next video where we design something else from a blueprint. Cheers.